Okay, so I know everyone in this room probably didn't really care about where Queen's Park was before Bill 10 and the previous bill ever came out. You're law-abiding, tax-paying citizens who do your job. You look after children or you send your children to independent child care. And you think that uh, after you pay your taxes and keep abiding by the law, that Queen's Park will never be in your hair. Who among you felt that way? You just felt the government, as long as the government didn't get in your way, you would never get in its way. Yep. Okay, I'm really sorry on behalf of the legislature that the government has gone after you. I had a brief conversation last week with Ontario's Ombudsman uh, about a number of different issues, hydro being one that I used to be the energy critic for. Um, the critic now for Treasury Board, so I talked to him extensively about another piece of legislation before the Assembly, which is called Bill 8. And before we left, I talked a little bit about this bill. And I said I was very concerned that the Minister of Education continually referred to unlicensed daycare in Ontario as illegal. Mm -hmm. yes. He said that's not what my words were. No. He said that his report talked about greater enforcement and the fact that the government itself had locked in enforcing its own regulations. He also restated to me what I know you've all heard that he has said in, in his recommendations was that we do not eliminate unlicensed child care in Ontario. Uh, what's happened in the last couple of days is uh, we put forward and we had hoped right up until question period today that the government would allow us to travel the bill. Typically, in a government that is assured with its majority and is confident in its uh, plurality, they will often travel a bill to places like Ottawa, Kingston, uh, they will go up north to Sudbury or North Bay, and then they'll pick up something in so southwestern Ontario 401. Now for you folks, it might be a bit easier to get to downtown Toronto than it is for the people I represent in Ottawa. But I recognize that even for all of you from, from Burlington and from Oakville and from Brampton and Mississauga, that you're looking after children all day. Mm -hmm. That the parents that you're looking after their kids for are also working all day. And it would be, cr it would be very difficult for you to make the deputation um, at Queen's Park. So we're going to try and make sure that there's evening sittings at this point in time. Uh, but it was rejected to, uh, it was rejected to travel. I'm really sorry about that uh, because at the end of the day you expect that your government uh, is going to listen to you. This really isn't a partisan issue, in fact I bet you some of you didn't maybe vote in the last election, maybe some of you chose a different political party than mine. And that's okay too, that's democracy. But when democracy fails is when it stops listening to the people that sent them to Queen's Park. And why I'm really happy I'm here tonight in Oakville is because you have a cabinet minister, a liberal cabinet minister who you need to contact tomorrow Kevin Flynn. and tell Kevin Flynn that in no way, shape, or form can he proceed this way by running roughshod over uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen in his riding who are him. vulnerable. He won't listen. You got to keep it up, guys. You got to yeah. keep it up. And in Brampton, you have four MPPs in Brampton. Mm -hmm. You got to get back on the phone with them. Okay, they're senior members of the government at Mississauga, in fact, call all of Peel Region. They own Peel Region with the exception of two seats, one New Democrat, one Conservative. We both stood up for you guys today. I need you to call them. Mm -hmm. And from Burlington, they have a brand new MPP. This uh, Eleanor McMahon said she would be a big, strong voice for the people of Burlington. On the first test, of whether or not she could stand up and speak effectively with a strong voice and she did not pass the test. So I need you all, I know this is a lot to ask, but to keep pushing. The other thing you guys are powerful at is, is probably having uh, within your network six to eight, maybe even more parents that you're involved with every day, right? Get them to pick up the phone. Tonight when you go home, write down your MPP's phone number and their email and pass it to every single parent you talk to tomorrow. If you go to school tomorrow with your friends and you're, you're dropping off the kids, and I know Myrna does that with Victoria, takes you to school sometimes when we're not there, hand it over to some of the other uh, childcare operators or babysitters or grandmothers as well. Let them know that this is a real threat. 
okay? And, and let them know what you've been talking about, the 140,000 childcare spaces that are going to be lost. The fact that daycare and childcare in Ontario will see an increase of 30 to 40% in cost. Who can afford that with the price of gas and the price of hydro mm -hmm. these days? I know even my husband and I couldn't. And you're going to let them know that this is going to impact high growth areas like Oakville, Burlington, Brampton, Mississauga, and southwest of Ottawa, and, and rural Ontario more than it will in, in, in major urban centers like downtown Toronto and downtown Ottawa. So I need you to do that. Through your networks, you're going to be able to reach these offices a lot more. And what you need to do now is figure out how you want to amend the bill so it doesn't put you out of business, doesn't put our kids out of childcare, and doesn't make childcare so unaffordable that women have to decide whether or not they want to continue to work or they want to stay at home. This actually is quite regressive if you think about that. We're talking right now about empowering women in this country. We're talking right now we want more women in the workplace and in leadership positions. And a bill like this comes forward and not only puts hard working women out of business, but it also takes away choices for other women. Other women like me and you who want to create either entrepreneurship or a leadership role for themselves. Mm -hmm. I really think this is a big debate that we want to have, and I don't think we want to give up on it. Mm -hmm. So today I know you were discouraged because I can tell you I had a lot of emails, a lot of tweets, a lot of Facebook throughout the entire day. The first person that came to this issue with me on, on this issue, her name is Mum Taz Maui. I don't know if you've ever heard of her. She's from Ottawa. She lives in my riding. We were, she was on parent council in the school I was trying to help expand. She owns an in-home care facility. For her, for she looks after other kids. Mm -hmm. And so she came to me and she said, Lisa, I need you to help me with this. And I promised her I would. Because she's a law abiding, excellent, she's an excellent volunteer in our community. And for the government to treat her as if she's some type of criminal incensed me to the point that I, even though I'm not education credit, contacted Garfield Dunlop and said, I want to join this fight with you uh, because it's just not right. And I've seen this before, by the way, with the Liberals. They did it in the horse racing industry, trying to say that the local horse people would. And you're from, who's from Haldeman? Or um, who's from Lancaster? Ancaster? You? From Flamborough. And a nice racetrack down there. They put it out of business and made the, the poor horsemen uh, feel like they were stealing from the government. They weren't. I've seen it with pharmacists, say that they were taking kickbacks because they wanted to fight. Fighting government is not easy, but it can be done. So we need to be relentless. So I want you to get your messages out from you tonight mm -hmm. to all your friends and just keep up at it because I'm going to tell you something. You don't change anything in this world by being silent. You don't change anything in this world by doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And if we can continue to pressure the government in the next little while, we can make change. So what the next step after tonight when you start talking to your friends, we need to figure out what amendments we can make to the bill so that doesn't put you out of business, doesn't lose 140,000 childcare spots, and doesn't drive up the cost of childcare in the province. So we have work to do. Mm -hmm. But that's where Garfield Dunlop and I come in with your leadership, and we work on those amendments. We're gonna need to work with Montessori's. So if you know anyone that has a Montessori, get them engaged. If you know anybody that's part of a religious or Jewish or a private day school, get them involved. It's gonna impact them too. And if you know just the babysitter down the street, Gosh knows how this creep is going to happen, right? How much further they're going to go. So when we get to the stage of, of amendments, we have to be prepared for that to figure out how we'll do that. And, and we have a term in the Maritimes when I was growing up, many hands make light work. Have you ever heard of that? Yes. So the more of us together means it's going to be easier. And this won't be easy. But many of us together, it will be easier. So I want, you to, I want you to do that, I want you to reach out. You don't understand how much power you have until you reach <coughs> out and you work. So where does the process take us now? Well, they've time allocated the bill. We had the, we had the motions today. I put the amendment in and I prescribed where we wanted to uh, travel. That was voted down by the Liberal majority. The NDP said in a more broad way, travel the bill over five days. The Liberal majority defeated that. And what they did is they time allocated, and this is uh, very unfortunate because we should have an ability, in my view, to debate in the assembly. They took away my ability to debate, okay? They took away my ability to stand on the floor of the legislature and talk about Bill 10. They also took the ability of my colleagues to stand up and speak to the bill. They've stopped us from having the debate. But you know what's worse than that? 
if they stop you from having your voice in your democratic institution that you pay for, that you send people to elect and be your voice at Queen's Park. And then what they did is they stifled the voices of Kevin Flynn, Elaine McMahon, um, Eleanor McMahon, sorry, and Ted McMeekin, who's a cabinet minister who needs to be held accountable. That's what they did, okay? Why? That's what they did. How can they do that? Because they have a majority. Exactly. And the thing is, the minority exists to ensure that we stop the rule of the, uh, of the tyranny of the majority. And unfortunately today, we saw the government use its majority to shut down debate and shut down your voice. And when you talk to people tomorrow, I need you to communicate that. I really take this seriously. I've been sitting in the Ontario legislature for nine years. I was one of the people who shut down the legislature when the single largest sales tax increase in Ontario's history, the HST, was brought in. Mm -hmm. We stopped the legislature from sitting for three days because we knew it was going to impact families like yours. Mm -hmm. But we were in opposition. And the government does have rights because they do have a mandate carried on their agenda. But what they don't have a right to do is shut down your voice and mine. Mm -hmm. So the bigger the backlash, the more they're going to step back. So you need to do this. The key people you need to talk to because I know you have people across the province. So I need to talk to your own MPP because you are constituents. And by the way, when the <coughs> Liberals stood up and voted, I would tell them that uh, they were letting their constituents down. Yeah. And I did it particularly to the people in the back row. Yeah. After you contact your MPP tomorrow, make another phone call to the constituency offices of Yasser Nakfi, who is a government house leader, who decides when bills are debated and when they hit the floor of the assembly. Call Premier Kathleen Wynne's Don Valley West office. Let them know how displeased you are. And third and finally, the person who's responsible for this and the one that is least willing to have a conversation on how to fix this bill, call the Guelph office of Liz Sandals. Let her know that you're going to be there on Sunday and you hope she shows up as well. I'll get you a second. Sure. That's what you have to do. Now where do we go from here? The bill's going to be time allocated. I sent out an email yesterday, and I'll be sending out another one today. Mm -hmm. There will be instructions on how to contact the clerk. Send a letter to the clerk. Have it read into the record. And if you can appear by phone, by video conference, or in person, show up and make a deputation at the committee. Okay? But it's first come, first serve, so you need to do it quickly. So apply immediately, and just keep doing that, keep doing that. So uh, and if you don't know what email I'm talking about, maybe Jerry, you can put the email on, uh, on the Facebook page, if yeah. you don't mind. Um, and, and that's what I want you to do is I want you, and, and if you can appear and they decline you because there's only so many spots, yeah. what I ask you to do is write your story. And I know you've already sent an email, probably to Liz Sandals or to me or to Garfield or to Andrea Horvath or something like that. Just take that, you can either expand it or send that same letter to the clerk, okay? That's how you're going to try and influence this. And then we'll have votes. There'll be another sort of, uh, it, what we call clause by clause in the legislature, okay? That's when we take a piece of legislation and we take all the amendments that we're talking about right now and we debate those and we vote on those. So when we get those and we figure out what those amendments are, that's when you contact all the members of the committee and I believe that uh, that's already out there on the Facebook page. What, what you want to do is then call and contact them and just be rational with them. And see, this is no child care. The government has no plan to find another 140,000 child care spots, do they? They have no plan to, uh, to look after our children. Maybe that's what they want. I sure as heck don't want Kathleen Wynne and Liz Sandals looking after my daughter. What about you? <laughs> well, they can't even run the province. Why could they think they can take my daughter to school for crying out loud? But, uh, you know, so, so, so that's the process. Once that's all done, there's something called third reading. And that's when we get to debate. But then, that's when I lament what has been put forward, and that's when the government says what they're doing is the right thing. So by the third reading, there's no ch chance to change legislation. The best we can hope for is looking at something called regulation. So that's what the process is. That's where we're at. We're at a very serious stage in this uh, fight. And I know you guys have a vast network. And by the way, I applaud you because we're all independent operators. Some of you probably didn't know each other a year ago. Uh, some of you probably didn't know each other until you showed up here tonight. But now you're a network. Look around. You're pretty strong. 
And by the way, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. So FYI, <laughs> make way for mummy is what I said in Ottawa when I recently spoke at the event. So you're going to need to be active. You're going to be very tired by the end of this. I can't promise victory, but I can tell you one thing. You will be heard, and we need to ensure that you're heard. So that's all up to you, but I'm going to continue to do my job on the floor of the assembly, and Garfield's going to continue to do his job on the floor of the assembly. So effectively, it boils down to this. Network. Network with other people like you across the province and in your community, even if they're in Montessori or private or religious day school, uh, even even the licensed daycare operators, uh, the Association of Daycare Operators uh, of Ontario, mm -hmm. oppose this bill. Reach out to them. Many hands make life work. Two, contact your local MPP by phone, and then make sure you contact the three I mentioned, the minister, the premier, and the house leader. And third, get your name on the list to speak as deputants for this bill. And that means if you have friends that are in such a position, they call too. Because what's going to end up happening is if you look organized, you look fierce, they may back down. I can't promise that. I don't expect they will. But the, the fiercer you come out, I think the better we are prepared. So I'm going to continue to stand up for you. I'll try to get another question in the legislature um, uh, you know, after the break week, which is next week. And I know Garfield's going to remain committed on this. So that's where we're at. I hope you know I'm with you 100% of the way. And I'm, I'm prepared to do the heavy lifting on your behalf at, at the assembly. And I'm happy to take any questions you might have.